Welcome to American Issues Take One on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today, we're going to talk about misogyny. Is misogyny on the ballot? Our guest for the show is Cynthia Lee Sinclair, a regular Think Tech contributor here on American Issues. We have all kinds of background on this, demonstrating that Trump is a misogynist um, with his wives and all the women who claim that uh, he's been abusive to them, uh, with uh, Access Hollywood, Stormy Daniels, E. Jean Carroll. I could go on and Cynthia will go on. So the question I put to you, Cynthia, welcome to the show, is just how much of a, of a misogynist person is Donald Trump? Well, you know me and my quotes, so I'm going to start with a quote today because I think it sort of opens up this whole conversation that people are forgetting about. Uh, this is from Mary Trump, his niece. Since so many people are acting as if they're certified neurologists, I thought I'd join in and discuss the one patient I actually am very worried about. The United States of America appears to be experiencing cognitive decline. That's the only way I can explain the short memories that have erased the horrors of my uncle's catastrophic four years in the Oval Office. It's the only way I can explain a poll that shows Donald with a 51% approval rating in Wisconsin it's the only way I can explain why this race is so close when Donald, the convicted felon, adjudicated rapist, and 34 counts of a fraud remains a significant threat to our democracy. And that's end quote. And isn't that the truth? How is it that people are not, and I hold the media partly responsible for, the, for this too, is, you know, move on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. But why aren't they talking about the fact that this, they treat him like he is a, a proper candidate and his felonies, that misogyny, as you say, okay, let's go into that a little bit deeper here. His first wife cheated on, accused him of rape, not just in the divorce, but accused him of rape and then later divorced him um, and then brought back the, uh, the accusation. How many times have we seen that? Where there are people that come forward with not just an accusation, but possibly even a lawsuit against him. And I'm going to mention the 13 year old that has brought a case against him twice for rape at the hands of him and Jen Jeremy e Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein um, at the Epstein property in New York. Both times she has claimed that the reason she took down the case and stopped was because there were threats to her and her family. That's huge. And yet nobody even speaks of it. And there are court records that I have looked up and they are there. So um, what happened to that? Then just before he's going to be coming forward as the candidate, we have 22 women that came forward to say what he did to them. And then after that, we get the Access Hollywood tape where he admits the very same things that, he, that these women have claimed he did to them. So... If that's not misogyny, it's on steroids because it's misogyny literally on steroids where it includes rape. And so are people okay that he's a rapist? They, I've always been sort of in shock that people have foregone the whole integrity element of a presidency, yet now they're okay with a rapist? A felon, a felon who would not even be able to join the military if he were of the right age. But that's the extent that people are seeming to close their minds to this. And the media has spent more time talking about Joe Biden's age and his debate one night bad thing than they have about the fact that he is an adjudicated rapist. Trump is an adjudicated rapist. 
and has to pay the woman lots and lots of money because of it. And this isn't political people, a political hit job, as he likes to call it. Um, this is a jury of his peers in two separate cases. And then, of course, we don't even go into the national security issues of the documents and this woman that is standing guard at the door so nobody really even gets to hear about the extent of the you know, security risk that he has put us into. You're talking I, about Eileen Cannon. Eileen Cannon, yes, that is who I'm talking about. I don't understand why she hasn't been removed from the case yet, just for the fact that she was appointed by him and the way she has handled other things, to me, is just ridiculous. So all this, oh, they're just, it's a political hit job. It's not a political hit job. This has been going on all the way back to the days of The Apprentice. How many women that went through that show came out? 10 that I could find came out with reports of him being inappropriate sexually with them, grabbing their butt, um, uh, kissing them when they didn't act, you know, even know it was coming. Then let's go to the pedophile element. And I do not use that term loosely. First, we've got a 13-year-old that has accused him of rape, more than once being raped by this man and Jeffrey Epstein together. And then we've got all of the girls that were in the Miss Teen America that have come out. He admitted with his own mouth, okay, that he could just walk in and see them getting dressed. And, you know, he owns the thing, so he owns the pageant, so he can do it. And what are they gonna say? Get out, get out, you're the owner, and now I'm kicked out of the thing. Ah, they're in a bad position. And he puts people, women specifically, in a bad position because he knows he can. And then he bullies them afterwards or he bribes them, one of the two. He bribed his ex-wife and then went off to marry another woman and then cheated on her and married another woman and cheated on her. And that brings us right up to Stormy Daniels, who, you know, it wasn't assault. But if you listen to the interviews that she's done since then, she didn't expect it. She didn't even bring protection with her. And she would have brought a condom with her had she known she was going there for that. She wasn't planning on it. She wasn't ready for it. And sort of before it all happened and she didn't know what to say and she felt sick to her stomach. And the way she describes the way that she felt mirrors so many other women that are in that position mirror my own comments about being in that position and having things get away from me. Unfortunately, this society, while women have been breaking the glass ceiling in many different you know, professions across the board, we're still second class citizens, excuse me, we're still, um, we're still, not getting the pay that men get. We're still not considered for jobs um, that we would qualify for. So um, obviously I could go on and on and on and on and on. Um, my own work with victims of domestic violence has shown me that the stories I hear ring true because you know, separate from each other without a chance to corroborate stories. They don't just corroborate the stories they're telling. They corroborate stories from across the board, victims of this sort of thing. Not just the misogyny where we don't make as much money and we can't quite get access to the same jobs, but um, also it goes further than that with this man. And so if he's willing to do these kind of sexual assaults and brag about them, and that's what they are, 
then what else is he willing to do to a woman? That is a simple question to answer. If you remember and you get rid of that national, <laughs> um, I don't know, cognitive decline, I guess, because our memory is going bad and none of us remember these things? Or is it the media that we can blame because they don't talk about them? What is it? And that's my question back to you. What do you think it is? Well, I'm just looking it up on Google. Misogyny is the hatred of, contempt for, or prejudice against women or girls. It can also refer to social systems or environments where women face hostility and hatred because they're women in a world created by and for men. A historical patriarchy. Um, and, and that's uh, the simple, simple uh, definition of it. But Cynthia, you know, the, I guess the question I, I put to you is, uh, what is a misogynist in, in your view of it? Um, does uh, Donald Trump help us define that? I have never known anybody, for that matter, heard of anybody, um, you know, who was as pure a misogynist as him. But what are your thoughts about that word, the definition of that word, um, and the prevalence of that, mm, that kind of behavior in our society? Where did it come from? Where is it now? Why does it still exist in what we have hoped would be an enlightened age? Wow, that's a very big um, question. And I answered some of that in what I have been talking about already. You know, men are threatened by strong women. <laughs> I have found that. And as a woman minister in Southern Alabama, 10 years ago, actually now longer than 10 years ago, being the first woman that was going to fill the pulpit of the churches that I was sent to serve, I had some of the congregations that would not even come to that church, even though they'd been members for their whole life, because I was a woman in the pulpit. I have had countless conversations, uh, you could call them arguments, no, yeah, disagreements and discussions with other male pastors, specifically in the Baptist denomination, that don't believe that women can be ministers, and it is sacrilege and against the word of the Bible even for women to be ministers. And so I always try to dial them down on exactly what scripture it is that they follow. And it's in Timothy, and it says, women shall not have authority over men. This is something that was um, written long after the days of Jesus, for one thing. Jesus did not say that, <laughs> but it was written about later. But mostly, my argument back whenever one of the pastors tells me this, that pastors don't have authority over the church. Because they say, well, if you have authority over the church, then you'll be having authority over men. So... You can't be a minister. Well, wait a minute. God's the only one who's supposed to have authority over the church. We're just supposed to be sent to serve the church. So, so are you saying, Cynthia, are you saying that there's a religious element in misogyny? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, because that's right where you took the words right out of my mouth. Yes, and so many of our denominations still follow that, that patriarchal, uh, sort of not getting with the times type of a program. Um, even in a lot of the evangelical churches, you don't see women as pastors, mostly men. And then you look into the Catholic church and they have a whole sect that is all about being under the, under the bump of, which is why I'm so afraid about um, Justice Barrett. Because, because that's the sect that she belongs to. Does she have to check with somebody before she's able to do it? A check with a man before she's able to make a decision? That scares me. Um, and so uh, we see a lot of the religious right forcing this patriarchy down our throats in so many ways, in regular society. Well, let's talk, about, let's talk about the biggest possible example of misogyny that 
uh, that Trump stands for, that he acted on. Uh, let's talk about the cornerstone of his uh, first term. Um, let's talk about abortion. Can you connect up for me misogyny, women's rights to their own bodies, their own health and, and uh, abortion? It just seems to me there's a clear connection. Is there a clear connection for you? Without a doubt, yes, absolutely. They can control us if they can keep us barefoot and pregnant, remember? <laughs> all those barefoot and pregnant things that we used to hear about. It's all what it's all about. And then if they can get this new generation of births that are forced, and the, the biggest thing to me, though, that demonstrates the craven nature of this whole abortion thing is the lack of exception for rape and incest. The story of the 12-year-old girl raped by her uncle has to leave the state to go to get the abortion that she needed. Um, there's just no, you can't shine that up and make it Christian. You just can't. And so absolutely, and the hypocrisy is kind of evident also, as during the pandemic, all these Republicans are standing out there, my body, my choice, in regards to a mask, <laughs> right? And yet they think it's okay to take my choice about my body against that. No. You know, you mentioned the media, and uh, I guess the media includes the entertainment media, but I see so many movies that are made right now which feature abuse, which fe feature that kind of patri patriarchal relationship in the, in the household. And, and I can't help but thinking that uh, Hollywood is telling us that A, it happens around the country, and B, it is the culture of America. Um, to have patriarchal husbands beating up on um, wives who are the victims of misogyny. I think the biggest danger with it, and I think they might be coming from the right place. They want to uh, broaden awareness. And I get that because I've spent most of my life working about and towards broadening awareness, making it easier to talk about. But by the way they sensationalize it, it's almost as if they're desensitizing people to it at the same time. They're not having... It's not like the first ones that came out with the burning bed, you know, it's Farrah Fawcett. That was a specific story of a woman standing up to the abuse, not without showing at all. Um, and, you know, we seem to glorify abuse and violence more and more and more and more in every single thing. And I just spent some time with my young granddaughter. And there's a show she wants to watch and it is a cartoon. They do call it an adult cartoon. They call it adult content, um, but it is nothing but sex, sex and violence. That's all it is. So why do they make sex and violence shows that are cartoonish? When obviously it's the kids that are the, the main, focus and the main audience target. And that's what scares me a lot. Yeah, let's talk about the, um, the justice system. You know, um, you hear about young women who want to go after uh, somebody who has abused them or raped them or created a, a, a hostile environment, which is laden with um, misogyny and abuse. And yet the, um, the courts and the legal profession doesn't really seem to address that. Your thoughts? Well, I think it starts at the ground level with the police, not enforcing um, the TROs, the temporary restraining orders that the women get. Because the minute they're not enforced, then it's like an open door for them to come back, which is what happens over, over, and over. And, you know, Jay, I, I want to give you big props for allowing me to have my show that I did finding respect in the chaos for all those years, providing a safe place for survivors to tell their stories and a place for advocates to come and share important resources. 
And I heard over and over and over the same stories. You know, if your TRO isn't enforced, what are you going to do? Then for a bit there, we even had in our own, you know, legislative session, they were trying to get some laws put in place where there could be ride arounds, ride alongs with a social worker to be there at some of these uh, domestic violence situations that they go to. And it didn't pass. And I thought, What's wrong with these people? Um, because to me, that's just a, a no-brainer to do that. Um, to give the women the counseling they need, the help they need. We have very little of it out here. And still, so, people are told to go back. Oh, well, all of this. Give another chance. You know, go back. Especially in the religious world. Go back. You have to stay with your husband. So if you are religious, you have to fight against that in really difficult ways. All that you've been discussing is the, what do you want to call it, the, uh, the landscape uh, for Trump to be and get away with being a misogynist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to discuss the policy point here with you. That is um, probably more than half the country, half the electorate are women. Mm -hmm. um, and yet they do not vote as a block. If they did vote as a block, a misogynist, a clear misogynist like Trump, um, aside from all his other problems, um, could never, ever win. He would have to, you know, he'd have to, you know, he, he would have to convince all of them. But he doesn't, he doesn't seem to be able, um, or rather, the women don't seem to be able to get together. They don't seem to take this seriously. And if you walk down the street in any American city and ask a, a number of women um, whether they would vote for Trump, and they give you an honest answer, um, a lot of them would say, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Trump. And you would say, don't you understand he's a misogynist, uh, that, that he hates women? Don't you understand that? Why, why in the world would you vote for Trump? Why would they, Cynthia? What is going on here that any woman, any woman at all, would vote for Trump? Well, that goes back to what we've just been talking about. And that is, and we know that it mostly the religious right are the people that support him. So these religious women who are under the thumb of their husband, they vote the way their husband votes. They don't stand up to their husband because if they did, they will get either verbal abuse, or if it goes any further, that will be physically abused. They will not be supported in a separate independent life, a separate independent decision about it. And it's never even talked about because it's so ingrained into the relationship that they have, into the denomination that they come under. Um, I know that Methodists, which is my um, denomination started allowing women into the pulpit way before any of the other ones did. And we now have a woman bishop, which is awesome, right? And women are celebrated in the Bible when you look to the words and the books that describe Jesus's ministry. And then the patriarchal uh, bent starts to happen afterwards. And so where, and you know, Controlling the masses, a lot of people think that religion is all about controlling the masses, right? And so within that religion, it's about controlling the women in the masses. I took a women, uh, women's Bible study a long time ago. My ex-first husband wouldn't let me go to church. So during the week while he was at work, I went to a Bible study because I was already a Christian. So... We studied women in the Bible one year, and one of the things that has really stuck with me is we learned about the mosaics that were made, the little tile mosaics that were made by the Catholic Church, going way, way back into antiquity. They were changed. There was a sect of women, okay, that were more powerful than the men, more popular than the men, and so they made the women be nuns. They'd no longer be priests. They were priests. The mosaics showed them as priests. And they can carbon date the tiles 
to change that mosaic so it's no longer a woman. That has stuck with me all these years. That is really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but, but do you agree with me, Cynthia, that if the women, you know, did organize, women of the country, women of the world unite and become, see themselves as a political force, as a, as a group, a uh, constituency of voters, um, they could win. Uh, they could, they could, they could Ooh, win. They could beat Trump. They could beat any misogynist. Um, yes. And so uh, it's just it's just a, a matter of uh, the demographics. So why? Uh, gee, it's really it's really sad to say that this continues. And the same woman who would vote for him is the woman who knows full well that he is a misogynist. Um, I, and I find that extraordinary because the papers have covered you know, his, his various adventures and, um, you know, violations. Uh, it's just, it's extraordinary that he would have any vote from any woman, in my view. The other thing is that if he wins this election in November, um, or somehow gets back into the White House, um, it will be all, all the more of a mandate that he can do what he wants. He can shoot people on Fifth Avenue, uh, and he can abuse women as never before, then nobody will be able to stop him. It would be very dangerous, for example, for a young woman to take a, a job in the White House. It would be uh, dangerous, for example, for any woman to be around him and expose herself, um, any woman at all, expose herself to his machinations. And I suggest to you, I'd like your thinking on it, is that if he gets back into office, his misogyny will only increase. He will see it as approval. He will see it even as a mandate to continue and, um, and uh, you know, satisfy all those patriarchal guys out there uh, who, who agree that misogyny is good. Well, you're exactly right. And to me, that is more the danger, even than him in the White House, he himself, the damage, well, the Supreme Court has already made him a king. So he can do whatever he wants, which is exactly what the Supreme Court has handed him. But what it says to the men, it's okay to be that way. And so that whole, you wonder why the women are okay with it, because they listen to what their husband says. So if they're not okay with it with him, that means they have to not be okay with it from their husbands either. And they're not ready to make that kind of stance or that kind of change so they can't admit that that really is bad right think of all the women that make excuses for their abusive outright physically abusive husbands so these guys well he doesn't hit me he might talk to me like i'm a dog but he doesn't hit me and i've heard people say that before those words exactly so that's where they're coming from and then you know, wives be subject to your husbands. That's in the Bible, and they get it drilled into their heads. Of course, they don't talk as much about what they. It, that same scripture tells the husbands to do: honor your wives. You know, that's a more of a gray area that they don't seem to push as much out there. When you say he can do whatever he wants, that just like sends a shiver down my spine. Because the, one of the specific things that's in the report, the police report, and the, the um, deposition that the little 13-year-old girl gave, and she said she was scared. What if I get pregnant? You, can't you just use a condom? You please, begging him to stop. And he slapped her and told him, I can do whatever I want. Those exact words. Same thing he said when he was on the Access Hollywood tape. Can do whatever I want. When you're a star, they let you, you know? And the same thing he said about the women, um, the girls, because they weren't even women yet, at the teen um, pageants and the, you know, the Miss America and the Miss Teen pageants. He can do whatever he wants. He owns it. Same thing. He always thinks that. So it's, we don't have to wonder what he's going to do. He's already told us what he's going to do. And I'm angry at the media for treating him like he is a regular candidate. I just don't get it. 
Yeah, one, one thing that you said that I'd like to dwell on just for a minute is sort of like um, he has created uh, and, and accentuated the div division in our country. Um, he has encouraged bigotry. He has encouraged racism. Uh, many statements, uh, you know, that he has made directly go to that. And um, I, I don't, I don't know if uh, it's, sort of, it's sort of like the mafia type statements, where you say it uh, at the edge, and then people take it as instructions. So when he makes these racist statements, there are people out there that think that racism is okay, and they become all the more racist. Mm -hmm. So the same thing would apply, would it not, with misogyny? If he is saying that misogyny is okay, and he certainly is, and that you, when, when women complain about it, you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, you know, the, the country, the men, uh, begin to see that as as as, as uh, it's okay they can do this if he can do it i can do it we can all do it so it's not just trump's machinations it's the effect he has on the culture and the underlying culture in the country and if he gets back into the oval office i believe we will see more of that we will see an increase in misogyny all over the place your thoughts you're absolutely correct, without a shadow of a doubt. It will get so much worse. It has already gotten worse. Just in the fallout from his administration, the four years that he was in office, it's already worse. And we've talked in the past about the Dunning-Kruger effect, you know, that people like him because it makes them feel good about that part of themselves, right, that has long been shunned and spotlighted as not being good, right? And just when we think it's going to go into the, you know, history books and we won't have to deal with it anymore, along comes Trump and changes all of it. And um, not that I loved Hillary Clinton, but she would have made a great president. And had we a woman president at that juncture in time, we would not be here. We would not be seeing a rise in domestic violence. And the statistics show that there is a rise in domestic violence. There is a rise in the crime of rape. There is a rise in all of this violence. And like you say, you know, it's not just the misogyny. And when you take misogyny to the stage of abuse and rape, then you know it's not just misogyny, but that's where it starts. If they think it's okay to hurt a woman because a woman is not a human, a woman is just a plaything, a woman is just somebody to manipulate and use, not someone that has her own rights, her own mind, and should have her own independence. You know, the implication of his attacks uh, on Hillary Clinton uh, showed his misogyny. And uh, although he was quiet for a week or two after the debate in which Biden did not present well, uh, in more recent days, he has um, started attacking Biden, but also Kamala Harris, um, who is, you know, trying to be a good vice president and potentially a presidential candidate. Um, and what I find interesting is that Kamala Harris is a woman. And his attacks on Kamala Harris smell of um, racism, and they also smell of misogyny. Your thoughts on that? They do. And it is interesting that he attacks her the way he does. He has only been sort of marginally going after her all through this whole last four years. Now, when there's this sudden talk, and we know he keeps his finger on the pulse. If he's not watching those every single every single newscast on every single channel, every single day, then he has hired somebody who's doing it for him, okay? And so the talk was Kamala would make a much better president. She's very popular, you know, women would stand behind a woman. I don't know, the women that are for Trump, I don't know if they would go for her just because she's a woman though, because they're under the thumbs of their husbands. They're stuck in that patriarchy. But um, he recently, just recently, in the last few um, uh, 
what you call it, said he's been having, the rallies that he's been having. He's going after her hard now all of a sudden. It's like, and he does that. That's his MO. He seeds the ground with stuff, right? Before it happens. And then he comes out with the big guns. But he's already seeded the ground. So by the time he comes out and says it outright, the ground is already seeded. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that must be right. You hear it lie enough times, you start to believe it. Even, you know, we have to, knowing he's a liar, we have to stay on top of ourselves to not fall for some of these things that get repeated over and over and over and over. And our media is a perfect example that they fall into these lies, this ground that has been seeded. And then when the big guns come out, they're all, oh, but it's too late by then. They've already helped him seed the ground. And that bothers me a lot. I've been yelling at the TV quite a bit lately because the media has nonstop been talking about Biden and this debate, right? And yet they didn't talk, they haven't talked anything about the lies, 30 lies in 90 minutes. That's how many lies Trump told during that debate. And if you look, if anyone looks, and I look, so I know, and I looked more than just once, his eyes in the midst of Trump, I'm, dis I'm describing Trump at this moment, with all those theater lights, bright, bright lights in his face, his pupils did not constrict once. Even when he would look up and around, his eyes would stay cute. He was on drugs. It was obvious. And one of the things that that I have put forward every time somebody sends me some stupid debate, debate thing, I go, well, you know, it might have been more of a fair fight if they'd both been on Adderall. But, you know, hey, um, Biden was on cold medicine, which is the opposite extreme. <laughs> you know, so you know um, Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia, I want to ask you one last question, putting you hypothetically on a platform addressing all the women in the country, all the women. And, you know, there's there's going to be, um, you know, um, let's see, 160 million of them, I think, or something in that that range. Mm. What would you say to them? Ooh, I would say, let the scales fall from your eyes, open them up and look at the truth. The truth is out there to see. From his own mouth, he has admitted that he assaults women. This isn't just abuse or misogyny. This man takes misogyny to the next level, regardless of how dangerous he is to our national security, to our democracy, all of that, which is huge. The bottom line, all, all of the work that women have done from the suffragettes to today, okay, <laughs> will go away if this man is able to get back into office. He does despise women, men that rape, men that assault women, and then admit it as if it's not even a problem. These are the kind of men that are dangerous to every woman in this country. And Trump is most dangerous of all because the man has power. How many other men have the same kind of power? Don't fall prey to the media because they're not really covering it. Do the research. Look back on the things that he is admitted to. Think about the fact that he is an adjudicated rapist. And sometimes when the media talks about it, they call it abuse. It wasn't abuse, it was assault. There's a difference between the two. Remember that. Remember that when it comes time to vote. Vote for a man who, I don't care if he's old, give me an old guy that can get things done any day, that has integrity, that is honest, that is willing to look at his own faults and learn and grow any day. I don't care if he's 90, okay? Over a man who assaults women, who hates women, who has cheated on every wife he's ever had, who has, and here's the big one, has talked about how he lusts after his own daughter. He is not just a misogynist. 
He is not just a rapist. He is not just a man who assaults women. He is a man who looks at little girls in a way that should never, ever happen. And it's our job. It's our job as women to stand up to the patriarchy, to the misogyny, and make a new path going forward where women are counted as individuals with their own rights to their own bodies. And that's what I would say to the 160 million women out there. Please, please Ooh. educate yourself. Okay, women of America unite. Thank you, Cynthia. It looks like we're out of time. Really appreciate your comments today. Aloha. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. Aloha.